Greetings from Nationals High Speed Lab. I am Jitendra, part of High Speed Products Group. Hi, and my name is Nate, and I'm also part of High Speed Products Group of National Semiconductor. And today we're going to be talking about National Semiconductor's 25 gigabit technology. So, Jitendra, what kind of trends in the market are driving 25 gigabit per second technology? Nate, uh, modern day servers are all virtualized and these servers can easily put out multiple lanes of 10 gigabits per second. This, these lanes of 10 gigabit per second needs to be aggregated so that they can be switched, routed and transported within a data center or outside of the data center with ease. IEEE and OIF standard bodies are defining 100 gigabit standards. Currently, it's defined to be four lanes of 25 gigabits per second each. And each lane goes through encoding and some FEC overhead that can bring up the total data rate to as high as 28 gigabits per second. The ecosystem today consists of 10 gigabits per second exposed interfaces. However, most of the ASIC technology and connectors uh, and PC board materials are all moving towards 25 gigabits per second serial. In fact, we've recently heard some announcements from FPGA vendors demonstrating 25 gigabits per second technology. The piece that's been missing so far is the retimer technology. The retimer technology is essential to make serial 25 gigabit per second ecosystem work. Today, we are going to talk about National's 25 gigabit per second retimer solution. Nate, why don't you walk us through this setup? Great. Let's jump right into the demo. So, the pattern generator for generating the 25 gigabit per second is by this Tektronix Burst Scope. This is set for 25 gigabits per second, and that signal is sent through this Molex impact backplane. We use two daughter cards, one over here and one right here, and this creates a total length of 18 inches at about 18 dB loss at Nyquist. The signal is then passed over to our 25 gigabit per second technology retimer and then the signal is fed into this Agilent oscilloscope. Now the display for the oscilloscope is also shown up here. So, Jitendra, this eye looks really clean for 25 gigabits per second. So what type of features have we had to add into our technology? Uh, we played every trick in the book, Nate, <laughs> and then some more. Uh, but one thing that I would point out here is we use our third generation silicon germanium process technology to achieve this level of performance. You will notice here that the random jitter is, is very small. And that random jitter is almost entirely coming from the setup. The reason for that is our bipolar transistors have very low 1 over F noise. And we couple that with our LC oscillators to give excellent RJ performance. At the same time, we use the high FT of these transistors to recover signals that are very highly attenuated as well as drive large signals on the output driver. So using the combination of these two, we are able to achieve this uh, very good looking eye. However, the best part is power. Nate, do you want to give the chip the touch test? Sure. So I'll just reach over here and I'll just put my finger right on the chip. And I can actually hold it there and I actually I don't feel any heat at all. So. The chip is, is running very cool. That's excellent. So the performance at a very low power consumption. But what about bit errors, Nate? We know the, a clean eye is good only if there are no bit errors. That's a good point. So what we should do is, is move the outputs from the oscilloscope back to the BERT scope, and then we can run a bit error rate check. Give us a few moments, we'll change the setup, and then we'll look at the bit error rate performance. And picking up where we left before, now our 25 gigabit per second retimer is hooked up into the Tektronix BERT scope. So as before, it's using a 25 gigabit per second data pattern through the media, and we're checking the bit error rate performance. Before we get to the bit error rate, this shows a nice clean eye diagram, and it's very similar to the eye diagram we were seeing previously. So now we'll go over to the detector screen, and we'll show the bit error rate performance. And after I hit reset results to clear the number of resyncs, do you see it's clean data? Well, we'll let that accumulate for a little bit. Yeah, it's very good to see there are no bit error rates. But uh, while it's accumulating, Nate, uh, maybe I can ask you a couple of questions. Sure. 
first off, uh, just looking at the setup, I don't see a reference clock. That's because there is no reference clock. Our technology requires uh, no reference clock at all. Uh, we extract the clock from the incoming data stream. Excellent. So there are no requirements on the reference clock. That's, that's very good. What about power supplies? I only see these two wires coming in here. Uh, once again, we only require one power supply for our, uh, for our device. We don't need any multiple power supplies at all. Excellent. And what are the requirements on this power supply? Uh, the requirements for power supply filtering uh, is, is very minimal. But many of those power supply filters are included inside the device. Excellent. Uh, let's go back to the bit error rate and see if we have any bit errors. As you see, we actually have zero bit errors. Very good. Thank you very much for joining us. We were demonstrating our latest analog technology, 28 gigabit per second quad retimers, very low power consumption, very high performance, and very easy to use robust features.